Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching Today I Found Out, and in the video today, the mysterious Kugelpanzer, the German designed one man spherical tank. Just before we get started, I do want to say that, rather appropriately, this video is sponsored by World of Tanks. World of Tanks is a free to play game, and stay tuned because I give it a go later in the video. But if you want to get started with the game right now, please do check out the link in the description below. Loads of free perks for people who go through that link and support our show. During World War II, German engineers designed and built a number of revolutionary super or wonder weapons known in German as Wunderwaffe. This included a wide array of aircraft, guns, and ships. Among these weapons is a mysterious small round tank named the Kugelpanzer, which literally means spherical tank. The odd little tank was never seen in the European theater, and very little is definitively known about its purpose. What is known is that it was made in Germany and then shipped to Japan and and then later captured by the Soviets in 1945, probably in Manchuria. Today, the only one known to exist can be found in the Kaminka Tank Museum in the Odensovsky district of Moscow, Russia. Powered by a single-cylinder, two-stroke engine, the Kugelpanzer has a slit in the front, presumably a driver's viewing port, and a small arm and a wheel in the rear, perhaps for stability and or maneuvering. Its hull is only 5 mm, that's 0.2 inches thick, and it isn't fully clear what type of metal comprises its armor. And if you're wondering why we don't know this, well, that's simply because no one is allowed to take a sample of it. Popular hypotheses concerning its purpose include reconnaissance as a mobile observation post for managing artillery fire and as a cable laying vehicle. However, there is actually very little evidence to support any of these hypotheses since there has never been any documentation found that explains the vehicle or its design. Given the dearth of evidence, as you would expect, speculation is rampant, and one intriguing theory even posits that it was commissioned by the Japanese as part of their kamikaze strategy of suicide missions. By August of 1944, the ailing Japanese military had been at war in the Pacific for seven long years, beginning with the Second Sino-Japanese War in 1937. During this period, rather than being captured and wanting to get in one last lick, some Japanese pilots had begun the practice of crashing their mostly disabled planes into enemy positions and killing themselves in the process. Through most of the Pacific War, this was an informal, voluntary act. However, as the war was winding down, the desperate Japanese command, who were running out of qualified pilots and whose aircraft at this point in the war were outdated, decided that they would get the most out of their unskilled personnel and obsolete machinery by incorporating planned suicide missions into their battle strategies. As such, in the fall of 1944, Japanese forces began a series of kamikaze strikes. If you want to learn more about how this went down, do see our video on how were kamikaze pilots chosen. Now, in addition to improvised devices such as simply strapping bombs onto existing aircraft, the Japanese military began manufacturing specialized equipment. These included the aircraft called Oka or Cherry Blossom, as well as suicide boats such as the Shinyo Seaquake. Indeed, even tiny submarines were made, including a modified torpedo named Kaiten, returning to heaven, and Kairu, which meant sea dragon, which was a two-man craft. Given this mindset of many Japanese leaders, it has been hypothesized by some that the Kugelpanzer was a part of this plan, with a few key points often put forth to support this theory. First, like all the other suicide missions, it was small and designed to be operated with a limited one to two man crew. Second, it wasn't equipped with any apparent offensive weaponry, although it has been speculated that it was meant to have a machine gun mounted in the front. And third, its hull was a rather flimsy 5mm thick, which was very thin compared to other armored vehicles, but on par with that of a suicide craft. For example, the Type 97 Shiha, said to be the most widely produced Japanese medium tank of World War II, had 26mm thick armor on the sides of the turret and 33mm thick armor on its gun shield. On the other hand, the Long Lance torpedo, from which the Kaizen Man's torpedoes was developed, had a comparably thin shell at 3.2mm thick, much closer to the width of the Kugelpanzer outer housing. For reference, the thickness of a common World War II helmet, the M1, was at 0.035 to 0.037 inches, just under one millimeter thick, which was sufficient to sometimes stop a 45 caliber bullet. So essentially, the five millimeter thick walls of the tank would have been sturdy enough to relatively reliably stop many types of enemy bullets from getting in, but thin enough to easily give way to a blast from within. But this is all just hypothesizing. 
Whatever its intended use, the Kugelpanzer certainly has gone down as one of the most unique weapons developed during World War II. So just before we get into the bonus facts for today's episode, I do want to say that this video is brought to you by World of Tanks. Now in that game, you don't get to use the Kugelpanzer. Disappointed! But do not worry, World of Tanks has 400 tanks and upgrades for you to play with. Now you guys always seem to like it when I actually go and play these games, and that makes it kind of a more honest advert. So. Let's go play some games. I gotta say, I was just, I was having a little trouble getting this set up. I was recording through OBS, and oh, I also apologize for the quality of this microphone. I know it's not great. It's a uh, overpriced headset that I bought that turns out to be really bad quality. Uh, I was accidentally playing this in 1080, and then I switched my screen to its native 4K. I know this video is only going out in 1080, but this is insane. The detail on this, I thought it was impressive at 1080. The detail on this at 4K is just absolutely wild. Okay, uh, I should point out just before we get started, this game is entirely free to play. You can download it, use the link in the description below. That helps support the show, that's very kind of you. You can play totally for free, and this, like, we get a lot of pitches for games. I think I mentioned when I did World of Warships, which is the same company, by the way, uh, that we get a lot of pitches for games, and then you end up paying, like tons of money to actually win. This is not a play pay to win game. Let's play some games. Uh, let me just point out what we've got down here. We've got our different tanks. So uh, I was playing with British guys. You've also got Americans, Germans, Chinese, Czech tanks. Uh, some over there. All of that good stuff. Uh, I'm going to play with the M2 because it's a little fast tank. I rather like it. If you do play this game, uh, use our link below there because then you get an M22 Locust, which is a bonus tank for free, which is cool. Who doesn't like a bonus tank for free? There are also some 200 tanks. Just as it loads, I'll say there are there's 150 million people who play this game, which to me was just extraordinary. I actually had to check they didn't add a zero to that, but no, it is 150 million people, which is like more than double the population of the UK. The green team up there in the top, I can't really point to it with my cursor, but if you look there in the top center, those are my teammates. I like to stick with them because otherwise they end up, end up getting destroyed. It's, it's all about strategy. Just stick with those guys and you'll be fine. And by fine, I mean I'm absolutely going to get destroyed because I'm new to this game. Okay, oh yeah, you've got this so you can kind of zoom in and out with the scroll wheel. If you've played World of Warships, uh, this is really similar. It's a little bit faster moving than uh, World of Warships because you know, we're in tanks. We're not in ships. <laughs> He's having Is this dude just running over trees? Come on man, don't you care about the environment? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna give him a little nudge, see what happens. He doesn't like that. Uh oh. <laughs> oh, he's nudging me back. I wonder if I can make it through this. Come on, come on, come on. Yes! Did it oh 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 oh, oh! God damn. I'm such a coward. Uh oh. Oh, I'm not good at this. I'm I'm not good at this. Is that guy still hiding behind there? Did someone destroy him for me? That was kind. Alright, I'm gonna go ooh, there's some guy up there. Let's do this, let's do this, let's do this. Bom ba bom ba bom bom. There he is, there he is. He's probably distracted shooting some other guy. Oh no, he's not distracted. Oh no, oh no! Yeah, I'm not super great. Let's play another game. Let's roll with these guys. They seem to, to know what they're doing. I'm just gonna hide behind this big dude. Here we go. Yeah, let's get in between these guys like a coward. Did you did you have to? Did you did you really have to? Was that really what? Yeah, I've been spotted. That's that's not good. Oh my! Um. That's it, he got me with one shot. Uh, yeah, so don't play too advanced when you're not ready for it. Simple lesson, I'm the only guy on my team who has been knocked out. I'm the only guy on any team who's been knocked out. There you go. A lesson learned. Listen guys, this game is totally free. You don't have to pay for it. It's not one of these games where you gotta pay for all the upgrades. It's a lot of fun. Even even when you get shot by Lump Dump Shooter, Lumpy Dump Shooter, it is what it is. Um, 150 million other people out there waiting to kill me when I play two advanced games for myself. 
Check it out, link in the description below, and that's it. All right, so that's World of Tanks. It's just simply a lot of fun. Join World of Tanks through our registration link below and get that free premium tank, the M22 Locust. And let's get into those bonus facts. The aforementioned Japanese one-man torpedo-like submarines called Kitans were just modified torpedoes that allowed the person inside to control them. They also featured a self-destruct mechanism if the person failed in their mission. This was necessary as there was no way for the person inside to get out of the torpedo once he was sealed in. Early models did include a mechanism to escape once the torpedo was aimed correctly, but supposedly not a single soldier seems to have ever used this feature, or so the official story goes. Because of their apparent lack of desire to escape, this feature was quickly abandoned. Each person who died as a Kitan pilot would earn their family about 10,000 yen, which is about $120 today. Kitans were ultimately not very successful, primarily because they could not be deployed very deeply and were stored on the outside of the submarines. This isn't so much a problem for the Kitans as it was for the submarines that were carrying them, who would have to stay very near the surface. This resulted in an average of about eight submarines carrying Kitans being destroyed for every two ships destroyed by the Kitans. Each Kitan was about 50 feet long, could reach a speed of 30 miles an hour, and contained a warhead at the nose. So I really hope you enjoyed that video. Please do hit that like button if you did. And as I mentioned, this video brought to you by World of Tanks. Check it out through the link in the description below. And as always, thank you for watching.